We'll have a moment of silent meditation and pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, it is November 2nd, 10 o'clock. All three county commissioners here, and we'll start with consents and approvals. Good morning. Good morning. We have uh, 21 exonerations for $18,015.42, minutes for October 26, 2022. Vouchers General County Fund, 274480 911, 2475 48 Home Confinement, $204. Chestnut Ridge Park, 6529.74. Camp Monthly, $7,909.78. Mason Dixon Park, $159.21. Recreation levy $2,228.94. Assessor's valuation $50.84. Law enforcement forfeiture $21,000. Mon County ARPA $4,825. Purchasing card vouchers General County Fund $10,760.76. 911-1798.28. For a voucher total of $332,428.83. We have position vacancies for boards and authorities listed on our website and fiduciary orders for November 2nd, uh, 2022 and fiduciary, court, fiduciary Commissioner George Armistead itemized statement of services. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Papa moves and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Do we have any introduction of new employees or personnel changes? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Yeah, that's rare. Okay, we are at comments from the public. If anyone wants to come down, state their name, their address, um, and I want to clear that we are not allowed, well, we are not going to respond, but we can respond during the end of our reports. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jason. I have no address for my home was taken away from me while I was unlawfully incarcerated. The truth has been clearly presented here previously. The fool knows the truth and willfully does the opposite thereof. I am commanded to show compassion. This compassion is illustrated in the moral obligation to do for others what they cannot do for themselves. In the parable, the Good Samaritan, I am not here for myself. I am attempting to prevent the false incarceration of my fellow man who chooses to obey God. At the moment, my fellow man fears Ask any man on the street, and it will be known that the why they comply is out of fear that a man denying his oath and forcing compliance to ungodly deeds. That man is the, is the sheriff of Montegalia County. If you will not impeach him, simply ask him to uphold to his oath, to the Constitution and the superior clauses thereof. If you continue to support the lie, you are bound with him. The reason why you do not believe the truth will work is because you do not know the truth. You only know the lies to which you follow. You call yourselves leaders, but you do not, you do as you're told. I am not a leader, I follow. I follow Jesus Christ, my Lord, my God. For the lies lead to deception and deception leads to destruction. Stop leading people in this land to destruction. Stop suppressing the truth. If you wish to go the way of the world and follow lies, that's fine with me. I am just here to tell you that it will not go well. If you want to be leaders, then do so by taking a stance against the lies and suffering the people of this land. Allow freedom, true freedom, to flourish. If you choose to continue in the lies, you will continue to, to need those lies enforced. When the people come to realize that the only reason they're following in the lies is that they that if they do not comply, they will be forced into jail, the people will revolt. The this is only a form of destruction. Surely you do not wish destruction upon this land. You have a choice to rule in truth and righteousness or lies in blunt force. The truth has been clearly stated. If you are in need of wisdom, ask. If you continue to know knowingly, the if you continue in knowing the truth, and do the opposite thereof, you are a fool. Let me remind you that the truth is sharper than any two-edged sword, 
Hebrews 4.12. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Come on down, James. State your name, address, and then you'll have up to five minutes. I'll give you this, Tom. I think okay. I sent you, but each commissioner can have it. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Good morning, folks. I've not made my presence here for a long, long time. Just you state your name and address? Yes, just sir. Second. Yes, Thank that's you. uh, your honor, Commissioner. My name is James Giuliani. I live at 256 Prairie Avenue, Morgantown, West Virginia. Uh, proud steward of the Alexander Wade House. Uh, that being said, I'm here today that uh, I have a lot of concerns, and I haven't been here for over four years. And I said that when we did our deal, which I appreciate that all of us worked together to get the prop my property purchased and through the Development Authority and all that. And I said that I would like to stay away, but I just feel there's so much going on that, uh, that I have to try to give back a little bit because I've been given a lot. And that being said, I've looked at certain, certain things going on, and I'm looking at equity and fairness, and you know that I've looked at that for a number of years about West Virginia University, and certain private-public partnerships, as far as transparency with that. We have West Virginia University that used to be close to 30,000 students within our community, which is now below 24,000 students. So we've lost 6,000 students in uh, 10 years. That's quite disturbing. And we hear very little of it. When Milan closed, we heard about it, and it was devastating to us. But what we're finding out is it's devastating to the city of Morgantown with what's happening. Now, we can go back, back and forth, to the city of Morgantown, responsible, irresponsible. But the fact of the matter is, the city of Morgantown is the city. It's the county seat. And with that being said is that the city of Morgantown does not have the ability to grow anymore through whether their fault or not. We cannot annex in. When we annex, it's probably going to be a big box, if possible. Not much room for that. Or it's going to be a nonprofit, like Ruby, which is a wonderful thing, but still for the city, it is not a, doesn't bring in tax revenue. So that being said, the county has the opportunity to grow. And you guys are doing a good job, at least in the TIFs, in the TIFs. Because I noticed that our county seems like we're pretty flat and, of course, the money that's in the TIFs stays within the TIFs, and I think with the COVID and things that we could even extend it out and be there almost 30 more years. I'm not sure that's, I'm not, that's not what I'm looking for. But what I'm here today for <coughs> is bringing those certain factors up to you is that we in the city of Morgantown, we provide all the services. We have planning, we have zoning, we have fire, we have police, we have EMS. Our first responders, fire department, is our EMS. Our first responders in our police is, our police are first responders to domestic, et cetera, et cetera. What we have is a situation where is that, whereas we could, should and could control our own destiny, we're not doing that, okay? That being said is that what I've learned from my experience of being able to some other places, et cetera, that things can be done in different ways. I live in Winter Park, Florida. Winter Park, Florida has all their fire, police, safety and rescue, and ambulance service. And that's what I'm getting to here, okay? We proposed a Monty EMS levy, excess levy, for the county. My question here is today, I've never heard anything to how it benefits the city. And if it had been brought forward, because I understand that the county, if there is no ambulance service, is responsible for it. Get it, totally get it. But the city could provide their own ambulance service and should provide their own ambulance service because right now we're duplicating services. The reason we're duplicating services is that Morgantown responds always to any emergency within the city. In fact, the fire department responsibilities are 70% EMS, 30% fire. Meaning that if we don't need them for EMS, why do we need so many firemen, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'm not gonna argue because we need our firemen. Our fire, my, fire department is great. We have, we have a response of great fire department. So what I'm saying to you is that there was something that came up about buying a facility for training. City of Morgantown's looking to buy in defense in depth. And I spoke with the police chief, I spoke with the fire chief, and whereas Chief Preston had an idea for a training facility for a five year period going back, Chief Caravasas had the same goals for the city of Morgantown to have their own ambulance service. Certain things got in the way, COVID, and now, of course, retirements, et cetera, et cetera. 
But indeed, when I heard that I want a training facility, and I asked, where's the county in this training facility? Oh, they, they could use it. Where's, where's the Mon EMS? I saw as they were presenting, he looks and says, you know, we can do this and that. And I'm saying to myself, at what point in time are we going to work together at some point in time to do things? If indeed a training center would be good for the city of Morgantown, and they're going to train officers and people from Mon County, et cetera, et cetera, why wouldn't we look at it all together? Same thing with it, and this is where I'm at. I'm not against an <coughs> excess levy for Mon EMS. I'm against it the way it's proposed in the sense that, or I'm not against it in the way it's proposed. Yes, I am against it in the way it's proposed. If it was separated into ambulatory and it was separated into facilities, because what we know through this levy, the city of Morgantown is not going to benefit in facilities at all. It's going to go to Cheat Lake and the Western End. And I talked about duplication of services. I think we can understand that is that here's the way I would explain it to you. Mon Health, now Vandalia, it used to be Mon General when I was a kid growing up, but now it's turned into quite a large and wonderful for our community and state. And W Medicine, so we're blessed that way. But where we have these two mega corporate, corporate organizations, health organizations, coming to the county to collect on bad debt, Okay, and the reason that those two mega health corporations were formed was so that they wouldn't duplicate services. So I know that both of them would come. So they were duplicating services. Right now we have the city of Morgantown coming, and my understanding only one of three, from what they said, was going to the hospital. Therefore, they're losing. But what I know is that the city of Morgantown, within a year's time, could create their own ambulance service without any question within a year's time if they had the wherewithal because guess what I know in a matter of four to six weeks they could somehow engage to buy a training facility so what I'm suggesting to you is and I'm asking you as the county commission the people who saw the project vetted then said they did their due diligence to come up and say we don't need 22 we need 18 well my understanding is the city of Morgantown pays 20 percent of county taxes that was my estimation meaning that on a $4.5 million rounded off levy, we're paying $900,000 of it. If indeed the city of Morgantown knew that they had that $900,000 to have to put to an ambulance service, if indeed they knew that through this facility that they're looking at the bike that's going to cost them over $30,000 a month, that means that now they're, they're creating a budget of $1.2 million a year that they could look at a facility, they could plan the most wonderful facility that there is. James, if you Perfect. can try and I will. I'm wrapping it up. That's Thank where you. we're doing. That's where we're wrapping it up. So okay. my question is to, to, to this commission, okay? We have a, a volunteer fire levy that we know the city gets zero benefit, okay? You talked about Tom, Mr. Bl Commissioner mm -hmm. Bloom, for a minute. I, I don't know. Try to That's be formal right. if not. I'm nervous here, sir. Okay. I'm nervous. Um, is that... What I'm wanting to know is, Governor Justice, we come up with these crazy schemes and things. Amendment 2, you want to be made whole. I understand that. You, I've heard this over and over again. So my question is, if the city of Morgantown were able to come up with an ambulance service within a year's period, and we know, and you can figure it out, because here's what I know. When I get my tax ticket, with, I'm in the city of Morgantown. You know what district I'm in. You know what parcel I am. You charge me 20, I get charged 20% more on taxes for my privilege to live inside the city limits, approximately 20%. Mm. Okay, so double on, 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 on commercial class four. Mm. So what, what I'm asking is that, can we be separated out, which I'm sure that we could be, the answer on the volunteer fire levy you told me is just not, nothing we can do about it. But what I'm saying is to you, how could you as a county governor not want the best for the city of Morgantown? If we could create our own, and then that way you wouldn't even have to service the city. You could concentrate on all the county, all the four corners of the county. So in conclusion, my question to you is very seriously, we're going to go after. We're going to go after ambulance service. Because guess what? It's the best thing for the life and safety of our citizens inside the city of Morgantown. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you that my, my one mission, James Giuliani, will be to bring a comprehensive type service that would be a training facility too. So let's start this discussion. Let's start this discussion of maybe that the city and the county in this situation work together because here's what I know. You guys are growing. You need to bring yourself up to today's standards. You need a fire department. You need professional paid fire people. Okay? We need those things. I think we deserve them as a county. And guess what? If our tax rates have to go up on property taxes, 
so be it. So be it. I'm willing to pay because I'm willing to pay for quality of life. In Winter Park, Florida, I have quality of life. They control all their utilities. They control everything. And guess what? I pay a little bit more in taxes, but guess what? I'm not shortchanged on anything. Never. Thank you, guys. Thank I look forward much. to moving this forward in a positive way. In okay. a positive way. Thank Appreciate you. your comments. Is there anyone else who would like to speak before? Seeing none, we will close public comments. Okay, at this time we have a presentation from Vin Vincent Kitch, Director of Arts and Cultural Development, City of Morgantown, to talk about what happened this summer. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank morning. you for having me. Um, I'm, I appreciate the opportunity to be here this morning. First, before we get into all that, I want to thank you all on behalf of the City of Morgantown for um, the grants that we received through the arts funding as well as a grant through the county tourism funding through the Visit the Mountaineer Country CVB. That's a great program. I hope you'll continue that. That was uh, very essential to the summer and we want to thank you for that and I'm going to share a little bit about what we did with some of that stuff. So this summer was truly transformative at Hazel Ruby McQueen Park and the Ruby Amphitheater. We launched the first annual Morgantown Music Festival Memorial Day weekend. We had another tremendous 4th of July celebration, um, brought five or 6,000 people to the riverfront, and we had our second installment of our Shakespeare in the Park, which is something that I hope we can continue to do annually as well as expand on. Of course, the, uh, the big star of the summer were the Ruby Summer Concert Series. From June 3rd through September 2nd, we presented free weekly concerts. I think we've really set a new standard for entertainment and activation down at the park, and the events are growing, and we are having weddings and walks and all kinds of festivals and things like that. Um, as a city initiative, I want to tell you that it truly took the village to make it happen. Nearly every single city department was directly involved in um, supporting the work. They really came together and helped us put on this fabulous summer and we couldn't have done it without all of all of those departments and others. Of course none of this would have happened without generous support from the Hazel Ruby McQuain Charitable Trust who is our title sponsor and our partner. We also want to thank you again Mon County uh, for the funding. We also received funding from the West Virginia Commission on the Arts, Mon Health System, Citizens Bank of Morgantown, and United Bank. I think uh, people are often interested in the financials, so I wanted to share some numbers with you. City salaried staff support is estimated at 121000 and I know that's low because I did all the formulas that was doing the estimating, and I know that's low for what we did on the summer. You can see a breakdown of some of our production costs and artist costs and that. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out, I think that's worth noting, is that we, the city presenting the series, generated $18,000 of direct hotel and food expenses that I know of that we actually paid for. Now I also know that we had audience members from all the states surrounding here at multiple concerts so there's an untold number of hotel nights, local spend and other things that go on with the people who were visiting the concerts. And I think another um, interesting fact was our little band of local regional based food trucks sold $70,000 in the course of these 14 events. That's something like four hours a night on a Friday. Um, which is all local spend and local food trucks. And we had almost 29,000 people attend the concerts this year. In addition to actual hard cash, we had a lot of other community sports here. You can see a, a listing of all of our sponsors. Um, our media, our media partnership with WVRC Media tripled our paid advertising, which is a huge benefit. In total, I think we ran something like 2,000 radio ads, and with their Nielsen tracking and all of that, they, they think that that's an estimated 6 million listens to the weekly spots about mm -hmm. the concert series and really got the word out about what we were doing. We received a bunch of other um, in-kind donations, which either saved us money or helped us do things that we needed to do to make it happen. I think another good partnership that is evolving is our partnership with West Virginia University. This year we created two internships for music industry students and we hired about a dozen, a total of about a dozen college aid staffers to work the events and I think every single one of them with the exception of maybe one came out of the the CAC students, the music industry students and now they have transitioned into working events at the Metropolitan Theater. And so we're hoping that these students will also stay involved and continue to work in all of the arts and culture that we have both at the park and at the Met. We had so many great 
photos and videos of the concerts and the audiences, I will say, truly represented every possible demographic you can imagine from age, economic, cultural, social, any category that you can think of. If you've been there, and I know some of you were, you literally could see everyone from this big to senior citizens at, at these concerts. And it were, the, the audiences were really tremendous. And they, we still get people sending us notes and emails and stopping us on the street and just thanking us for the work that we did and the work that you helped us do. So somewhere around the middle of the summer, our communication staff put together this little one minute video and I wanted to share it with you. Let's see if this does it. And again, just thank you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions, but I did want to come back and at least share and give you an update and give you some statistics, and thank you again for all your support in helping make this happen. And we are busy working on next year's lineup as we speak. Thank you, Vincent. You got any teasers for next year? Yeah. <laughs> what was just your this morning, my bookie is like, now don't mention any names. I mean, we, we've, only, we've only got about um, three, but we've got a bunch of really exciting um, prospects that we're talking to. So, What was the most popular uh, group this summer? You know, it's, it's really hard. Jody Messina, who is a hit machine, had a huge crowd of at least 3,500 people wow. there. Wow. They were, the full trail was six deep. Ba Bela Fleck that night was a rainy night. And so the crowd was there, and then it <coughs> rained right after the opening act, and it looked like everybody left, although there were, the entire under the roof was packed with people. <laughs> he waited 40 minutes because they're like, well, we're going to play. And he played two hours mm. after he came out, and they came back. And I was like, oh, about 1,000 people stayed. And then 10 minutes later, I was like, well, this looks like 1,500. And by the end, it was another 2,500 people when I did a final count of, you know, the best guesstimations we can. We have a lot of, we have some systems. And so... <laughs> Um, we had, you know, we averaged over 2,000 people a week, but that 1,500 mark was kind of standard, and it, uh, we only had like three rainy, rainy nights, and it was yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, weather was but amazing. Yeah, you really lucked out on yeah, the weather. Yeah, weather was amazing. Even when it was raining, it kind of like, there was a pocket around. Right, it, could, it was storming all around, and I just wanted to be able to jump on Facebook and like, it's not raining at the park, and we're kind of, a, you know, it's going to be really all over our website. We are a a rain or shine event, so you should probably come down. If, if it rains, we might take a break, but that concert's, you know, once the bus gets down to the river, they're going to play yeah. <laughs> at some point, so, yeah. Well, thank you very much. It was really exciting hearing all the buzz about it this summer. Thank you. I think it was, it was a welcome yeah. back from COVID and really kind of pulling people back out of their houses and, and participating, so thank well, you. I'm hoping next year will be as or more exciting. Right. I really like that one picture of the Ruby Summer Concert Series. I really think this one is really nice. Yeah, that was I the fourth that's of a really July. Nice that really gives you an insight. Yeah, <coughs> it is. That really promotes the whole city of Morgantown in the area. And yeah, we were very fortunate with the weather. I, I went to numerous ones, and it was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. I appreciate it. I think it really showed what that park was supposed could to be, be about yeah. and what it could do. And it, just get better from and we had one ticketed event by an outside promoter at the end of the season, which was really successful from our standpoint because it was the first time we shut it down and we saw someone selling beer inside the park and doing these <coughs> things that you've talked about. And they're already holding probably a half dozen dates starting in May next year, oh, wow. so you're oh, going to see a lot more free and ticketed stuff. Okay. Great. Well, thank you very much. Really thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. We have uh, Proclamation Operation Greenlight. Could Colleen read that? Thank you. 
Whereas the residents of Montegalia County have respect, admiration, and the utmost gratitude for all of the men and women who have selflessly served our country and this community and the armed forces. And whereas the contributions and sacrifices of the men and women who served in the armed forces have been vital in maintaining the freedoms and the way of life enjoyed by our citizens. And whereas Montegalia County seeks to honor these individuals who have paid the high price for freedom by placing themselves in harm's way for the good of all. And whereas veterans continue to serve our community in the American Legion, veterans of foreign wars, religious groups, civil service, and by functioning as county veteran service officers in 29 states to help fellow former service members access more than $52 billion in federal health, disability, and compensation benefits each year. And whereas approximately 200,000 service members transition to civilian communities annually, and whereas an estimated 20% increase of service members will transition to civilian life in the near future. And whereas studies indicate that 44 to 72% of service members experience high levels of stress during transition from military to civilian life, and whereas active military service members transitioning from military service are at a high risk for suicide during their first year after military service. And whereas the National Association of Counties encourages all counties, parishes, and boroughs to recognize, to recognize Operation Greenlight for Veterans. And whereas the Montegalia County Commission appreciates the sacrifices of our United States military personnel and believes specific recognition should be granted. Therefore, be it resolved with designation as a green light for Veterans County, Montegalia County hereby declares from October through Veterans Day, November 11, 2022, a time to salute and honor the service and sacrifice of our men and women in uniform transitioning from active service. Therefore, be it further resolved that in observance of Operation Greenlight, the Montegalia County Commission encourages its citizens in patriotic tradition to recognize the importance of honoring all those who made immeasurable sacrifices to preserve freedom by displaying a green light in a window of their place of business or residence. Adopted the second day of November 2022. Thank you. Move that we approve the proclamation as presented. Second. Bob, move and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. And do we have you coming back up or do we have any grants? No, you don't have any grants. Okay, we don't have to have you come back the same time. Okay, correspondence? Um, I actually don't have any course. Well, the other, other than what's on the agenda. Right. Um, we received a letter from Main Street Morgantown re requesting $400 from the commission to pay West TV for the video recording and TV broadcast of the annual Christmas parade on December 5th. So you guys can okay. put that on a... We'll talk about it on staff reports and put it on the agenda so that we can yes. vote on it. Okay. Do we have any other questions? We had got an email from uh, Lori at Buildsos, the uh, cross country coach at South Middle School, just thanking us. They uh, rented and used the Mon County Center for their end of the year banquet. And she had some nice things to say about how nice it is that that's available. And we offer a discount for schools and things like that to use it. So it was a real nice place for them to have their event. And they, uh, she just wanted to express her gratitude for that. Thank you. Okay. Unfinished business. There is none. New business to consider for approval. The assessor's certificate of compliance received from Kent Leonhardt, Commissioner, West Virginia Department of Agriculture. Move that we approve the certificate of compliance as presented. Second. Prop moved and second. Any discussion needed or it's no, really self-explanatory. Self certificate every year that the commissioner provides in in regards to how many it's 10 percent of the salary so it's a supplemental when mark meets a certain uh, threshold, threshold yeah on collections on collections okay. yeah okay. so um i'll forward that to accounts payable okay so is the problem moving second all those in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye consideration to prove acquisition number 13 for the university town center series 2020 property tax district administrative expense fund Requisition is for $1,425, and that money will be paid to MuniCap for their service in the district. Move to approve the requisition as presented. Second. Pop, move and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Consideration approve requisition number 68 for the University Town Center Excise Tax District Administrative Expense Fund. And that requisition is $3,262.50. Again, those funds will be paid to MuniCap. Two separate invoices. Correct. I move that we approve Re requisition 68 as presented. Second. Bob, move and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there any other? Does anyone else have any other business before we move on? 
Okay, see now, reports from elected officials or department supervisors or Granville. I won't forget you this time. <laughs> no? Okay. Anyone else? Seeing none, uh, Jeff, reports from county commissioners. I just wanted to give a little pat on the back to uh, our uh, facilities director, Scott yeah. Finch, and his team. We noticed during uh, election machine testing that <laughs> our election center needed a little TLC. We actually noticed it in the spring. And our crew got up there within a couple of days and, and painted the whole thing, fixed some tiles, fixed some ceiling tiles, so it, it's more representative of what uh, the standard we like to set out there for our citizens when they come to vote. So. I thank them for that. They jumped right on it and did a wonderful job. Um, uh, just a note on the election. I mean, the very essence of the election is the, the, that if you cast your vote, you have an opportunity to be heard. Um, with regards to uh, the the levy that was that was uh, talked about today by Mr. Giuliani, we thank you for coming in. Um, uh, the citizens of Morgantown can vote on it just like the rest of the county members. Uh, so. Um, I hope that they they make their voice heard, just like everyone else will when it comes to that uh, that levy, and we'll we'll go with it after whatever the results are, move on from there. So, and I still encourage everyone else to vote. Early voting is going on, three locations I believe in the county. Right. Um, so please get out there and vote. If not, vote Tuesday, and uh, let your voice be heard. As, as Sean continually says. You can't really complain about it if you're not willing to do something about it. So the first step in that process is casting your vote. So please do and look forward to a high turnout. Since the last meeting, uh, last Thursday, I went to Wadestown for a CNX check presentation. Uh, CNX presented $10,000 each to the Wadestown Volunteer Fire Department, um, the um, 100 Volunteer Fire Department, and the Blacksville Fall Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, so we, they had check presentation, and they promised us a lunch. So I, I didn't mind driving <coughs> out to West <laughs> Wadestown to get a good home cooked meal. <clears throat> In the afternoon, we had our uh, Mon County uh, broadband sync with our consultants. Friday, we have staff reports, and then I attended the Mohawk Bowl. Um, I think it was probably as good as a result as we could expect it on an overall county basis. It was a good game. The university jumped out early. Morgantown came back. It was really close. Went down to the last couple seconds of the game. Uh, it was a good crowd there. And uh, uh, the good thing is is both uh, both teams will probably be, be in the playoffs. Yeah, so yeah, uh, good luck to um, – does the university still have another game? Yes, they have one more. Yeah, so both have, still have a game. Yeah. Uh, Morgantown plays Lindsley. Uh, I don't know who university Spring plays. Mills. Spring, Spring Mills. 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 So, yeah. Good luck to both of them, and hopefully we'll have another Mohawk Bowl in the playoffs somewhere along the line. Um, Monday was Halloween. Uh, there were – uh, I went to my in-law's rental to give out uh, candy because our house is off the beaten path and doesn't get any traffic. Uh, seemed to be pretty, even though it was overcast. It rained earlier, um, though I think for the most part it didn't rain during Halloween and there was a lot of kids out. So mm -hmm. not sure how after all the trunk or treats that were out there. I sort all these parents and households are loaded <coughs> loaded up with candy. What, what we usually do is take it to the office because somebody will eat it, but nobody's in offices like yeah, my office right. i'm still the only person there's usually 40 people in a building i'm still the only person in in my building so I'm not sure what everybody's going to do with all that candy um tuesday we had our um, monthly monthly breakfast with uh, joe statler ron lido and frank devano uh, today we had before this meeting we had our call with green county uh, today's a normal day. Uh, Friday, we have our ribbon cutting with Coles. We have staff reports, and then the, I'll be attending the MHS Lindsay game. Saturday, I'll be going to the ball of the year. Uh, Mon Health puts on this ball to raise. It's a fundraiser for perinatal depression program at Mon Health, so it's a great cause, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. No, I'm really not, because I have to go to Wesleyan, go to a football game, and then rush back for, this, for the ball at 5. Um, as Commissioner Arnett mentioned, uh, Tuesday is Election Day. Early voting continues through Saturday. The three uh, early voting spots are Pierpont Landing, Mason-Dixon Park, and um, uh, Mountaineer Mall. So please get out and vote. It appears we're trending like right about where 2018 is. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's probably about 45% uh, turnout. Uh, I like to see those numbers. I like to see more people involved and more people getting out and voting. Uh, so hopefully those numbers will trend up and we'll have a big turnout on Election Day also. 
Mr. Giuliani, thank you for coming in. You're always so passionate about everything you, you speak of, and I know you, I know you speak from the heart. Uh, the commission did do a lot of due diligence with uh, the whole year-long process of talking to Mon EMS about how we are going to ensure uh, uh, service throughout the county. Uh, we, we may have to just agree to disagree that the EMS service provides service for everybody in the county, including people in the city. Now, I know first responders, firemen, police act as first responders, but it's to, until the EMS gets there and ultimately takes people to the hospital. And this first levy pass, when we did, I mean, we had the initial um, ask of um, Mon EMS was one number, and we pushed back and lowered that number. But the numbers before that were much higher, mm -hmm. and they were, they, were, they were reaching for the moon. And we said, let's get more reasonable and kind of start this off slowly and see where we can get. Uh, but there, there's not to say that facilities won't be improved inside the city. Uh, it's not to be said, you know, that's part of the infrastructure is part of the whole uh, re reason we'd like to ha or reason they'd like to have a levy. Um, but really also uh, batten down the services. So, again, I, I think your beef is with the existing fire levy. Uh, because that, you're right, as a city resident, when you pay for the existing fire levy, you also pay a fire fee. So, as, and I'm a city resident too. So there is an argument that that's, you're, you're double paying because the, the, the levy that you pay f as a city resident goes to volunteer fire departments outside. But we all live downstream, we all work together. So those, those funds still do affect indirectly the city, but you're right with that argument. It seems like that, that's where you have your beef. With the, with the MS levy, I, it really is a countywide service, and we're just looking to improve that service. A couple years ago, we got these two entities to merge and form this nonprofit because only one hospital was doing the service, and there's a lot of infighting at the expense of service to our citizens. So the first step was getting them to merge and form this nonprofit that's operating independently of the two hospitals, and now they're just moving that process forward. So. As Commissioner Arnett said, I'd, I'd like everybody to get out and, and make their voices be heard on this issue, and then we'll certainly take it from there because the Commission's position was, and as we have done in this current year, we've jumped in and started funding to help, uh, to be the help that's on the way. But, and then depending on where the levy goes, we'll have to, we may have to make other decisions. So I want, we want the public to make their voices, make their voices heard, and hopefully we'll see good numbers coming out to vote but again thank you for always for your passion and coming in to speak i really appreciate your interest uh we're not allowed to we're not back but we can talk after would be that if we had our own ambulance service your honorable commissioner then we would not have to duplicate the services there would be no question about okay it. And we, we have the capabilities to and there are things that are there are discussions that are going on in regards to how we can do our fire service better uh, but those are discussions that will be going on in the next couple of years, and maybe we'll get to a point where we have something more of a countywide service. But anyhow, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, again, uh, I welcome back, uh, Mr. Giuliani. We always have. We've we've known each other for years, and I appreciate. I know. <laughs> used to live next door. We used to live next door on Sherman Avenue. Um, I was both their paper boy. And, there was, and he was our paper boy, so. Yes. Um, no, I, I do appreciate it, as, as Sean said, your, your passion. You've always care about the community. You always are looking out for all the citizens, and I, I do really appreciate that. I, I just want to clarify one thing, and it's kind of like a misnomer, unfortunately. It's like county roads, there are county roads, or they say they're county roads, and we have no control over it. There's the county levy, which we put the levy on, but it's others who bring it to us. And, that, and that's one of the unique parts of it. So, um, but we are, you know, trying to work together. I don't know if I would call it a bad debt. What I would call it is an increasing cost for readiness. And, and, it's, and as Sean said, it was a number very high, and when they came to us, all we could do is request them to lower, which they did, and hopefully, as this will set an example for future uh, <coughs> providing EMS for the entire county. So I do appreciate that. Um, the second thing, I was fortunate to represent the commissioners at the grand opening ribbon cutting of Ascension Recovery Services 
called Wise Pass Recovery out in the Cheat Lake area. And I, this is something very important to me. I, I, I can't say enough for, to Ben. My wife was very appreciative and sister of how you wrote it. Uh, I made a statement about why it was important because I did lose a nephew and you wrote it very well and we were very appreciative of that, those, those comments. Um, we do not have the follow-up services and we need more follow-up services. It's, we can get them for a 24, 28 day commitment, but then it's after the fact that we really need to help people. And that's what I'm really pleased. This uh, group right here looks like it's, you know, they're talking about having 600 different patients right now. And I know they're looking at one or two other places. So I really can't say enough about Ascension Services who have also volunteered, well, volunteered to take a uh, run our sober center at a very low cost. So I really appreciate that. Uh, and finally, going to the NACO convention in the summer, um, at the National, uh, I was put on, I, I attended the Healthy Counties meeting, and they contacted me, and I'm going to be attending on Thursday a, the Resilient Coal Communities uh, meeting where there is funding available that I hope that we will reach out, and we're going to see if we could qualify and hopefully get some funding for us there. So with that, uh, oh, one final thing, uh, we did have an, on behalf of the ladies, the Dirty Dozen, as they call them, of they were ecstatic that the commission took the time to do a proclamation. They wanted to thank you. They personally wrote me really nice letters to just say that they were honored that you would even think of and do something like this. And it was a very important time, and they were honored at the, the ball game, 50 years of women in the band. So with that, do I have a motion I to adjourn? I want yeah. to mention one thing, and yeah. uh, you, you prompted something in your discussion about Ascension Services. Yeah. I was looking through these statistics the other day, and, you know, as a commission, <clears throat> we're very proactive in trying to deal with problems in front of us. We never sit back and just wait. We never think we've arrived. And I was looking at these statistics, and they were kind of depressing. Yeah. Uh, they were Mon County rankings as far as uh, county health rankings. And uh, this is from 2021. 18% of county residents have severe housing cost burden. National rate is 9%. 20% of Mon County residents have poor or fair health. National rate is 14%. Mon County has 381.8 out of 100,000 people with sexually transmitted infections. State average is 198.2. And nationally, it's 161.2. Average number of mentally unhealthy days reported in the past 30 days in Mon County is 5.4. National average is 3.8. So we're, there are, we've got, I mean, again, we're the best of the best. Mm -hmm. We still have a long way to go in regarding the overall health of our citizens. And, um, you know, so I just, when you were talking about that, I just remembered looking through these statistics. And I just happened to see this application, these numbers last night. And it, prompted me that you know we still have a long way to go so we're we're always we're going to keep working so right. so we're trying i appreciate that do i have a motion to adjourn so moved second we be gone